so high right now. Anything's possible. Oh my mama! Oh my mama made it, ma! Anything's possible! Rainy J's back with the vengeance back. All the real Celtics fans in attendance. Ooh. This is the truth like 34. Yeah. This like walking in the garden when you hear the roars. The crowd goes crazy. Most in-depth coverage on the daily. Mainly podcast royalty, the content kings. When you talking about the franchise with 17 rings. Focus like Danny at the deadline. Global with it, got a local feel like the red line, the blue line, the green line. Play it in between time. I'ma throw my C's jersey on in the meantime and press play. When the F's done, I can't wait until the next day. Trying to stay in tune with the C's, that's the best way. Melly. Hey there, welcome back to the Locked On Celtics podcast. Thank you for making this show part of your routine. I'm here for you generally Monday through Friday, but for these next two weeks, it's a special seven-episode deep dive into the Brad Stevens era. If you missed yesterday's show, that was part one. Today we're getting into part two. More with Isaiah Thomas and just what was the impact that Isaiah had on Brad and the perception of him as a coach, let's continue the conversation with Mike Dynan and Chuck McKinnon. Is this more Isaiah? Is it more? Is it more Brad? I don't know. I, I kind of, I kind of want to say it's. I always skew towards the players, so I, I do want to say it's it's mostly Isaiah. Um, but you cannot deny Chuck that that Brad did have an influence. Like he was just say, "Hey, you know what? We're going to roll with this. I'm not again. I'm not going to pigeonhole this guy." into a role that I think he should he should continue or be in. He's going to uh, – I'm going to make it so he's comfortable doing whatever, he, whatever he, he's doing and I'm going, to, I'm going to adjust to him. Yes, but I feel like, you know, when you look at the ro- – you know, I don't, I don't want to give Stevens too much credit here because look at the roster. You know, look at the other options. You know, he right. had a young, smart – he had a – the, the roster was young and it was and it was mismatched because, as Mike said, it was, there were bodies coming in and out. There was Terry Rozier, there was R.J. Hunter, right? There was you know Jared Sellinger. Like who else was on this roster? So you know, the, it wasn't the, 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 the um you know Isaiah was given an opportunity and he ran with it, right? Yep. And I think Brad was like. You know, I'm just gonna let let's just roll and see how let's see how this goes. I don't have better options. Like, what are my other options here? There was no sort of like um, uh, by playing Isaiah in this in this starter role and and, and all this. Uh, what am I sacrificing? It's not like you had another veteran or something that oh, I if I do this, I'm taking away someone else's minutes. And you know, there was nothing. They were they they were just a mediocre team. Ainge was still trying to shuffle pieces in, get salary, get the salary cap straightened out, build younger players, collect assets, all that sort of thing. So if it, if it wasn't for Isaiah, we would have had a couple more years of just like, oh man, this is just we're in this NBA. Um, you're in that middle pack. You're in that yeah. purgatory. Purgatory, you know, yeah. I mean, he saved us from purgatory. And you could say, well, the Celtics were never true finals contenders. But, man, basketball was so exciting with him. You know what I mean? He he, he, he just gave us something to, to get excited about. So, yeah, Stevens gets some credit. But the alternatives were, were what? You know what I mean? Like, what was he going right. to do? Not play him for <laughs> – I mean, we – there were some players who developed, you know, obviously Smart and Rozier, but at the time, there were, you know, I felt like he had to just let Thomas roll with it. He, he had to. You know, um, maybe it was just as simple as Brad and the fans believed in Isaiah. I mean, he he didn't really get that much of a chance at his previous stops when he was in Phoenix. What did they have, like four point guards? That's yes. why they got rid of him because – they had a glut there. Uh, how much chance could he have really gotten? But when he got here, uh, suddenly he was being relied on, like Chuck said, because uh, they needed him to be relied on. And uh, the confidence, I think, helped him get over the top because he always talked about that. He always talked about how great it was to be loved by the fans. It might have been that simple as to how he elevated his play. So let me ask you this. Let's. Have, I'm going to put this out to both of you. 
if Brad Stevens never gets to coach Isaiah Thomas, if Danny Ainge doesn't make that trade, what is the perception of Brad Stevens today? So everything remains the same, but we don't get that magical Isaiah Thomas run. How much of the Stevens reputation, especially early on, because this is year two now, and how much of that? How much of this is just that Isaiah Thomas comes in, wills the team into the playoffs, even though they get swept. But Isaiah comes in and wills them into the playoffs, and and begins this this run, this Isaiah Thomas era that is just so beloved. If the Isaiah Thomas run never happens, does Brad Stevens is is Brad Stevens even still employed by the Celtics? I mean, I, I would say yes. I, I don't think – I think I the Celtics yes. were committed to him, right? They weren't going to bring him – he had like a six-year contract, right? He was making you know, $18 million or something. So I think they were committed to him. You're not going to bail after three years. I don't think he was uh, – without Isaiah Thomas, there were – that he had like these catastrophic tendencies where they're like, he's out of control. He doesn't know what he's doing. He's in over his head. I think you still saw some flashes. Like I said um, – it was really uh, Isaiah's so his second year. Thomas gets there mid-season. Then it's the third year that you start to see Isaiah ascend, and then and then so on. So, um, I guess I, I kind of view like Thomas's success led to Horford signing, right? Do you right. do you think like without Isaiah, and if the Celtics are still fledgling does Horford feel like he can come here I mean he would come here and compete I think he I'm not sure I mean Al yeah Al likes likes his bag and he may have just gone to the highest bidder but without Thomas the Celtics are still rebuilding right I mean it's just a different sort of feel um and so I think Isaiah's success helped with Horford and then that kind of – that also, you know, with Brett, with Al coming here, cerebral player, feeding into the whole Stevens um, uh, style, I think those all kind of worked, worked together. Um, so I'd like to think that if Danny didn't get Isaiah and we're not getting Horford, then, wow, what are those next few years until we get Jalen, until we draft Tatum? How bad is it? We're going to continue the conversation after I tell you about our sponsors. If you have excessive perspiration, then you need to try Sweat Block. It's a handy wipe that you can apply. You take a shower, you wipe this wherever your problem area is, and then you go to bed. And in the morning, you wash it off, and then it can work for up to seven days. A doctor created that to solve his own excessive perspiration problem. It worked for him. It can work for you. It's doctor created, doctor recommended. If it doesn't work for you, they have a dry shirt guarantee. That means you will get your money back. So no risk to try it. Google it, try it, check it out. Rachel Ray tried it out on their show with firefighters. They applied it, went into burning buildings, did their job, came out, shirts were dry. This is your little secret to confidence. You can wear whatever you want to wear and not worry about it. So whatever you need it for, a presentation, first day in the job, new date, whatever, check it out. Go to sweatblock.com. Use the promo code locked on. You're going to get 20% off. Go to Amazon, read the reviews, 13,000 reviews. It's been a, a bestseller there for 10 years. So check them out. 20% off at sweatblock.com. With the promo code locked on. Does this sound familiar? You've got one device that lets you catch the game live, another that lets you stream your favorite shows. Then you're watching the highlights on your phone, and your neighbor's best friend's login gets you the good stuff. Well, I want to tell you about a simple way to get all that entertainment you love without the hassle and a great way to finally get your TV together. It's called Direct TV Stream. And it brings your live TV and on-demand favorites together like never before so you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. That means no more juggling remotes, no need to buy another device ever again. And the best part? There's no annual contract. So get rid of the clutter and the confusion. Get your TV together with DirecTV Stream. You can learn more at DirecTV.com. That's DirecTV.com. 
compatible device required, content varies by package. Let's say for the purpose of argument that we get Horford anyway. Um, the Celtics made the Eastern Conference Finals twice under Stevens after Isaiah was traded. So Brad has still had a good career as a coach uh, in Boston. Uh, he still had success. He won over 300 games. Uh, um, yeah, what you said, Chuck, is, you know, they built on what Isaiah accomplished and the season that he had uh, where he was magical. He got even close to making it to the finals. Um, maybe that doesn't happen in Isaiah, but if you say that everything went half Isaiah never came here, but everything else went the same, uh, I don't see why they wouldn't have had success like they did. And then I think Brad's a pretty damn good coach. And you got to give him faith for that. Yes, he, he is a good coach. I mean, I, I, I think part of the purpose of having this conversation is, is to really take a, a, a deeper look at what, what made him such a great coach. And, and part of this is to try to add some of the nuance. Like this is a circumstance that, I mean, what, what can we say? We can say this about everybody, right? You can, you can go back and nitpick and change history based on, Hey, what if the San Antonio Spurs didn't win the lottery and draft Tim Duncan? Does Greg Popovich become a, a basketball coaching God? No, maybe not. Maybe, or maybe he does. Who knows? It's, the Spurs became the Spurs and this this juggernaut because they got Tim Duncan. And there's always one player. You can talk about Larry Bird coming in and, you know, do, does Casey Jones win, win championships in Boston without Larry Bird? I mean, it's, there's always one player out there somewhere that, that changes the, the course of history. And while Isaiah Thomas is not – at that level of player, I will say that for a couple of years, he played pretty close to that level of player. He had that, it really was a magical run. And Brad will talk at, you know, length about Isaiah and how much he loves Isaiah. I think part of it is because he's like, he made me look good as a coach. Like I guarantee you, I mean, he'll say that because he's self-deprecating, but also I do think that, some of that is at play that the the legend of Brad Stevens, when you had Chris Mannix out there tweeting out, who would you rather have, a, a player or Brad Stevens? You know, like, which, yeah, that's the appropriate reaction, Mike. But the but that that level of faith in Brad Stevens did also come from Isaiah Thomas being so damn good. Because some of it had to be, some of that had to be the, the faith in the coach. Some of that had to be the coach coaching his team to be like, because you still had Jay Crowder and you still had, yeah, you still got Al Horford in there and, and making sure that those guys all worked in concert with one another to take advantage of Isaiah Thomas having this, this incredible run. You know, it's when you think about it, so the optimism was super high by whatever, whatever it was, 2016. 2017, right? So, one, the team is ascending, right? Everything the GM does is like he's striking gold, yep. right? You know, he gets Isaiah, um, then they get Horford, right? So they're having some success. Brooklyn is starting their tank, right? We get Jalen Brown. The, I think the same year they signed Horford. We had the number three pick. So, and then all, at this time, Stevens just like his his um his persona was exploding, right? Like his reputation as this co as this genius coach was exploding. Every all the media were talking about him. He, he was just um, he was the hot thing. So you know, we were like, wow, we got the coach. Ainge is in a good groove. You know, he's making he's striking gold. He's he's clearing cap space. Uh, Brooklyn's imploding. We're starting to get these draft picks. It was like, yeah, it's all coming together. Yeah. Right. So I'm the optimism was super high and Steven's ability as, uh, as a coach and a leader was a big part of that. 
now everything comes, you know, you know, we, we're, we're climbing, we're climbing, we're climbing. And then, you know, we, it was that, you know, the moment where I, I guess you could kind of identify when does it start to go down? Is it, is it, you know, Kyrie, is it, it's probably the Hayward injury. Um, yeah, but we still yeah. have moments of optimism where we're like drafting Tatum and, and this and that, but you know, we're building in that season where you have, Kyrie and, and Hayward, I think it's just um, – I just – I'm eager to get back to – you know, it's the, it's the kid in me, John. It's like that Christmas morning. <laughs> I just – I love, you know, that optimism. Like, I'm so eager for seasons. Um, and I just remember that I could taste it, and I, and I want that again. But I think I'm all, I'm all over the place now. <laughs> <laughs> well, we, we – but you're right, though. Everyone was on a heater. At that point, like there, everything was going right. Um, Danny Ainge had struck gold on his trades, right? He, he, tra- he decided he was going to trade. Um, he, he decided he was going to trade Pierce and Garnett. And then he, he, it worked out perfectly. It worked out exactly the way we had all hoped. I remember at that point I was doing Celtic stuff live. Uh, in in the lean years of Celtic stuff live, and me and John Duke were talking about, hey, the best case scenario here, there is a world where Brooklyn fizzles out in a couple of years, and all of a sudden these picks that that they got, these unprotected picks, can go into the top, you know, top five, top three, whatever, and there there is a world where this turns around super super quick. Um, if anything, going back to the Isaiah Thomas era, it almost got too screwed up by Isaiah Thomas being too good because that that first year that they got Isaiah, he fueled the run. They they were back in the tank. They were back heading into the lottery, and they just kept winning. And mm-hmm. Isaiah just kept fueling them and kept it, it just kept uh, going. And I, I feel like. Things could have actually gone differently if they had just. I wonder. I wonder how that would have gone if they had just missed the playoffs that year. Uh, I don't even know who who they drafted in that season, but uh, if if they didn't make the playoffs that year, then things could have gone differently because they could have had another another a better young player, and and Brad could have tried to work his magic with that guy. Uh, but aside from that. Everything was going like extraordinarily perfectly. To answer your question, who did they draft? Um, after the 2016 season, they drafted Jalen Brown and Gershon Yabuselli and Z- Ante Zizek. <laughs> I almost couldn't say his name because it's been so long, but. Uh, they got Jalen Brown, so they did all right, and that was from the Brooklyn picks, obviously. But uh, even if they had not, um, if they had missed the playoffs, they would have had maybe a better pick on, on, of their own. But um, you know how they have the Celtics' luck in the lottery would be if they finish in the 14th spot, they would get the 14th pick. So uh, they got Yabu at 16. Anyway. Um, it was all trending great, as you said, as you both said, um, and it was working out. Jalen Brown, that has been a home run. Uh, Jason Tatum the next year, and not to get ahead of ourselves, but uh, the plateau or the peak rather was reached at the tip off of the first season with Hayward and Kyrie, and five minutes later, it was all gone. Obvious, we know that that changed everything. And if you're going to say, if you're going to have that discussion about uh, Isaiah, you know, what if the Celtics didn't get Isaiah? Then how would we look at Brad Stevens? Well, what if Hayward didn't get hurt? Then how would we look at him? That's that's an entirely yeah. That's let's save that because I I want to I want to talk about that specifically as we get to that point because yeah. that that changes everything. Like the, the Gordon Hayward injury changes everything about where we are right now heading into this next season. 
and and why Brad Stevens is now the president of basketball operations. All of this stuff, everything that the Celtics are currently dealing with, I think goes back to the epicenter. The epicenter of it all is that injury. Back to wrap up today's show in just a minute. First, got to tell you about today's sponsors. Whatever you need for your car, truck, camper, RV, motorcycle, get it at rockauto.com. No matter how complicated, no matter how simple, go to rockauto.com, enter in your vehicle's information, and then cruise through a very easy-to-navigate website that gets you the best prices on anything you need. Seriously, if it's an engine part, check them out. If you need wipers, floor mats, whatever, check them out. They're going to save you a ton of money. I've talked to plenty of people who have saved hundreds of dollars using rockauto.com. Don't bother with the chain stores. Don't bother with the dealerships. It's a waste of time to go over there, and you know that you're not going to carry everything that you need. So check out rockauto.com. They've been doing this for over 20 years, serving do-it-yourselfers. So it's worth the time to check them out. Go to rockauto.com right now. See all the parts available for your car or truck. And right, locked on in there, how did you hear about us box? That's how they know we sent you. It's an amazing selection. Reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. Rockauto.com. Going back to to, to wrap up kind of like that um, Isaiah Thomas stuff. Because that's the 2014-15 season. So it's the 20, 2015 NBA draft that the Celtics uh, – go into and this is this is the justice winslow draft this is where where danny ainge is is trying to to trade up and is willing to make all of these trades i'm really gonna you, you want to go down a rabbit hole i'll go down the rabbit hole so the celtics end up drafting terry rosier and he's he's at 16. okay fine it took a little while for terry to get to get to where he is but Rosier ends up, it, it turns out that that's a, a good draft pick. He's a good player. But if the Celtics had gone into the the lottery and if they had fallen into the top 10, well, Justice Winslow goes 10. And Danny Ainge loved Justice Winslow so much that he was going to trade the farm for Justice Winslow. Here's here's the rabbit hole. Here's Here's the difference here. First of all, Justice Winslow is part of this team. Let's say he get. Let's say they go from 16 to 10. If Isaiah Thomas isn't that good, isn't as good as he is, you draft Justice Winslow. Danny Ainge goes nuts. But the other thing is, I firmly believe, and if you look at the the number of trades that that were made by Ainge, I think that backs me up. I think that he was scared straight by the Justice Winslow near trade where he just kept adding pick after pick after pick after pick after pick. There, there'd be no Jason Tatum <laughs> you know, on this team if, if they made the trade for Justice Winslow. And, and Ainge, you go back and you look at the quotes from him after that, uh, he said, Whew, that, that kind of got out of hand. You know, He admits that that, got, that that pursuit got too much too quick. And then since then, he has stuck to a formula – for for making trades he doesn't overstep his bounds he does not say hell i am going to throw that extra first round pick that's that's the tipping point to me where ainge turned around and became the guy who almost made the trades but if this never happens then danny ainge still becomes traded danny and he doesn't have that moment of oh crap i better not do this i better be a little bit more disciplined so the trades, I think, I think you get a, a Danny Ainge that is a lot more aggressive over the years. I think you don't know what Justice Winslow would have been. Um, you don't know if then he would have would have drafted Jalen Brown. Um, it, it's the rabbit hole here changes the entire history of the Celtics because Danny Ainge acts differently, and I don't know what kind of what kind of players he gives Brad Stevens. I, I think the entire course of history changes just by the Celtics missing the playoffs versus making the playoffs that year. So it's based off of Ainge being scared straight off of that negotiation because yeah. they're trying to follow you. So if they were bad, right, then Ainge can either 
Enning has the 10th pick, then maybe he's grabbing Winslow. Or he's that draft was horrible, by the way. You look at those names, Collie Stein, Frank Kaminsky, um, Emmanuel Moutier. Like the names that were up there that Ainge could have had. I mean, Rose, you know, seeing Rozier at 16 is kind of like a win when you look at some of some of those names. Oh, yeah. So, right. So, but but I but I do follow you. I, you know, I think it, you know, it could be a bit of a stretch to to think that that scared him straight, but but I see your logic in in that that you know maybe altered his perspective. Um, I'd like to think that you know we hear the stories, but that he wasn't offering Brooklyn picks, that he was maybe just offering Celtics picks, um, because you know that just would have been grounds for firing. If you know, I don't know those stories, you know, in detail, but to give up, you know, a potential Brooklyn pick would have been, you know, catastrophic. Um, but, but yeah, it's, it's just interesting to, to think about when you, when you go back and you say, okay, well, had they tanked a little better, maybe they would have had a better draft position. But like Mike said, like their draft history, their lottery, you know, their, 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 their record with the lottery is not that good. Um, and that's putting it kindly. So I think it just kind of gave us the best of both worlds. Like we knew we were kind of, we knew we were rebuilding. And like I said, we had the Brooklyn picks. We, you know, and we were enjoying this sort of like, you know, mid-level kind of like, all right, we know that this team isn't winning a championship, but they're fun to watch and they're they're winning games in the playoffs. You know, it was, I felt like we had the best of both worlds. You know what I mean? Because rebuilding can suck. You can, you can be losing 20 games for four years, five years, um, and not go anywhere. We, we were at least having some fun. We didn't want the process. Uh, right. I don't oh. want to do that. No. And uh, let me correct myself from before, John. You, you said uh, I got my years mixed up. And the, the year after the Celtics won 40 and snuck in to the playoffs, they did get Terry Rozier. And he was a number 16 pick. But again, uh, you know, we wouldn't have had uh, anybody better probably because, like, oh my God, Frank Kaminsky. One of the worst players. In the he won a lottery pick. He was like number eight or nine, something like that. So that draft was pretty bad. So Isaiah Thomas accelerates the process in Boston. It's a little bit less of a rebuild, but there's some interesting kind of routes Boston could have gone if Isaiah wasn't as good as he was. That's going to be part of part three. So make sure you're subscribed to the podcast to get part three. Again, this is a seven part series. So Make sure you're subscribed, whether it's on the podcast or on YouTube. Please subscribe. Ring the bell there so you get notified when I drop the new YouTube show. And, of course, share the podcast. Tell your friends that they should be listening to and watching the Lockdown Celtics podcast here on the Lockdown Podcast Network.